guys welcome back to the Roxy Horror Picture Show. So we're going to stay away from the supernatural this week and we're going to talk about a serial killer by the name of Kieran Patrick Kelly. Now Kieran emigrated from County Leash to London in 1953. He moved over with one of his best friends Christy Smith. He was 25 years of age when he moved over. Now we'll go back to that in a minute. In, let's fast forward to 1983 where he was arrested himself and another person called Paul McGrath for robbing an elderly man. When he was brought into the cells he was he was kind of a bit shaky he was a bit on edge he was a severe alcoholic and he didn't get his fix so he wasn't in the best temperament and when he went into the cells there was another man there called William Boyd William Boyd was there from the night before. He was nursing a serious hangover and he was asleep and he was snoring. Now the snoring really irritated and grinded on Kelly to the point where he took off his socks, his own socks, tied them together, wrapped them around Boyd's neck and strangled him to death. Now Paul McGrath obviously didn't know, see any of this behaviour before in Kelly and he started to freak. He started banging on the cell door to get the attention of the police. Now when the police came into the cell they seen that William Boyd was dead. He was lifeless on the ground. They seen Paul McGrath standing on the other side of the wall in hysterics. But when they looked at uh, Kelly he was just sitting there with the socks off with a big grin on his face like a bowled child. It was madness. So there was a detective Ian Brown working that night and they brought him down for questioning and he admitted to everything that he'd done that day. Now, this is when the real horror story comes out. Not only did he admit to the murder of William Boyd, he started to admit to murders that he had done over the previous 30 years. Like I says, let's go back to 1953 when he moved over with Christy Smith. It was the Queen's coronation and they were in the London tube and they wanted to get the train into the centre. See, the reason why himself and Christy wanted to get in is because he was known as a petty thief and he knew he'd make a killing that day with the amount of crowds that be in there. Himself and Christy was there waiting for the train and they were chatting. And Christy just made a harmless comment. He just turned around and he says, look, you're 25, you're getting on a bit now. Do you not think you'd start to find a nice woman for yourself and settle down? Get married. Now, Kelly, what Christy didn't know is that Kelly was actually gay. Now, nowadays, so what? But back then, it wasn't just frowned upon, it was illegal. And he was petrified that Christy not only would tell other people, but he was mainly petrified that he'd go back and he'd tell everybody over in Ireland. He'd tell all his friends, all his family. He'd be disowned and nobody would care about him ever again. So in a fit of rage, what he'd done is he grabbed Christy by the neck and shoved him in front of the train. Killed him instantly. And that was the start of his murder spree in 1953. Let's fast forward to 1975, Christmas Day. Another man was found, Fisher. He was found stabbed to death in the neck and the head, lying on the cold ground wearing a Santee costume. Previous to that murder, earlier on that day, he, Fisher himself was found with a load of other homeless people and they were drinking. Now, he was merry, whatever, it was Christmas Eve celebrating and he decided to walk off. Now Kelly was there also and he followed him. He seen that he had a wad of cash and he wanted the money. He wanted to, to buy a drink. So he followed Fisher around the corner and he ended up baiting him over the back of the head, stabbed him and robbed him. Now when he was saying this to Brown, when he was confessing this murder, he started laughing, giggling. And he says, I had you. I cogged you on that one. And he goes, what do you mean you conned me on that one? And Kelly turned around and says, you guys thought he was just murdered. He was robbed. He had a wad of money in his pocket, but I left £40 in his pocket. So it didn't look like he was robbed. And Brown was just like, but you murdered him. And he goes, I got away with that too. 
See, there was forensic investigators around that time and they interviewed 12 people, including Kelly himself. But because they were all alcoholics or bums, as they liked to call them, they were incredible witnesses. So it was brushed under the carpet. It was just another homeless death. Back then, they didn't really care. There was so much homeless. They honestly just didn't really care. 18 months later, another man was found. Maurice Wiley. He was beaten and stabbed to death also but this time he was found with the broken neck of a bottle shoved up his rectum and not long after he was found and not far away from where he was found Kelly and another unknown man was there covered in blood the jumper more so on Kelly than on this other man. Now this other man was a bit sheepish and he was a bit quiet and hesitant but it turns out is because he was more of a witness to it than he was an accomplice. Now Kelly was brought down and he was arrested and six months passed and it was brought to court. But it was acquitted due to the fact that the lawyer stated that the state witness wasn't just a bum. He was an alcoholic and blind drunk and would not be able to recall what actually happened. So it was thrown out of court. Like everything that he'd done he got away with so far. Not long after this there was another victim called Ed Toll. Now he was found strangled to death in Kennington Churchyard in South London. So basically what happened there was Kelly went back there that's where he liked to sleep that's where he would lay his head down and where the graveside where he would usually go to that's where Edward Toll was sleeping. So instead of kicking him along and saying, here, move, that's my patch, he decided to take his belt off from around his waist, tie it around Edward Toll's neck and strangle him to death in front of two witnesses. As he got up, put the belt back around his waist and he went to walk away, a witness turned around and said to him, I think you might have killed him. So Edward Toll, God help us, stone cold on the ground, ended up being strangled again, even though he was dead already. Kelly went back, took the belt off from around his waist, wrapped it around Edward's neck and pulled it. And whatever bit of life that could have been left in him was definitely gone now. And he went up to the witness and he said, sure he's dead now, isn't he? And he walked off without even a care. This man was remorse, like he did not care what he was doing to anybody. In fact, when he was saying about these murders to Detective Brown, he was almost childlike. He'd jump up, the smile would get bigger, he'd get so excited, he started shadow boxing. He just did not care. And Brown made a statement to him. He actually said to him, Kelly, you're not going to be grinning like this in the court. And he turned around and he said, I'm going to be smiling like this all the way up into the prison gates. He didn't give two whatevers at all. He just did not care. Not long after this, again, there was a report of another five murders. Now, he claimed them all as his own. But Detective Brown was like, are you just trying to claim every murder as your own? Or did you actually do these? And he was like, yeah, I'm going to admit I done this one. I done that one. He listed them all. Now, a lot of them were unknown homeless men, so I don't have the names and I don't have much of the details of that. But it came up as far as 1983, before the murder of William Boyd. He was down Kensington Station and he pushed an elderly man in front of the train. Now, fortunately, the train driver seen your man fall, even though he was pushed, and he managed to break in time and managed to save this man's life. Now, a lot of witnesses explained to the police a description of Kelly and the police brought him in. Now it was brought to court but the jurors threw it out due to the fact that there wasn't substantial evidence that it was Kelly. There was no cameras to even state that it was Kelly. Remember now this was 1983 so whatever footage there would have been it wouldn't have been great. He got away with it again. But now he was actually caught for William Boyd's in a police cell, no less. Now, when it was brought up to court, he was only initially put down for 
William Boyd's. Now, he ended up getting life for that. And then two months later, he was up again for the death of Fisher and for Maurice Wiley, which he also got life on top of that. So he was guaranteed never to leave prison. But what I don't understand, and what you guys probably don't understand is, why was it just those three that he got charged for? Why did he not get charged for Christy Smith, his first ever murder? And why did he not get charged for the other murders that he confessed to? They also gave him the nickname the Underground Killer because a lot of it, a lot of his murders was he'd either burn them, strangle them, stab them, torture them, beat them, but the number one killer was, or his number one thing to do, was to push them in front of trains, apparently. Now I say apparently because there's a part two to this story where I will explain why he was not charged for Christy Smith, even though that was his first ever murder and the first, not only the first ever murder, it was the most described. He went into every detail on why he killed him, where he killed him, when, where, how, what, even what they were wearing. He explained everything and that wasn't even brought up in court. But yet, Fisher was brought up into court and he didn't even remember all the details but he ended up getting charged. So it just doesn't make sense to me. So tune in next week where not only will I be discussing the crime of Christy Smith, I'll also be discussing the other 25 murders that he committed or claimed to have committed and was never charged and the reason why he was never charged. See you next Friday. Bye.